want to draw your attention to a few scriptures that we've already covered, but I want to re- recalibrate uh, us uh, to this message on friendship with God, Abraham, the friend of God. James chapter 2, verse 23, this is a very powerful scripture, and it's also in the New Testament on another occasion, and also in the Old Testament. It talks about Abraham. Abraham was a patriarch of the faith. He's a tremendously important figure in the Old Testament. And out of Abraham and Sarah came the promised people, Israel, and the promised blessings. But in Abraham, there's so much that we enjoy today because of his faith. The Bible talks about our faith as well as linked with his. James chapter 2, verse 23. The scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for what? Righteousness. He just believed, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Everybody stretch out your hand toward the offering. Father, thank you for the increase. We pray for multiplication and overflow in the lives of your people, Lord, above and beyond what they would have ever expected. Give our people, Lord, the raises. Give them the opportunities. Give them the open doors. Give them the clients, God. Give them the promotions. Give them the bonuses. God, bless their businesses in every way. And Father, bless them in their health and their well-being. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. It was counted to him for righteousness. Just believing. Believing. Now, people would think that that would be an easy thing, but I'm going to tell you, the devil runs interference on your faith all the time. He is trying to get you to doubt God, trying to get you distracted, trying to get you off your game for God. But you have to remain focused. Abraham believed God. He believed God every day. He believed God every month, every year of his life. He believed. And you have to stay calibrated to faith in God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. That is, right standing with God is believing God, believing his promises, believing what he says, understanding, saying, God, if I don't understand something, will you teach me? It is being teachable. It's being humble. It's allowing God to use you and touch you and open up your heart no matter what you're feeling. No matter if you feel abandoned by God, he has not abandoned you because he has promised to never leave you nor forsake you. And he was called, that is Abraham was called what? The friend of God. The friend of God. What is a friend of God? Well, a friend of God is someone who values closeness. They value closeness with God. They value transparency with God and trust and communication with God. Sometimes we feel like God is silent, but he's given us a whole book. He's given us a whole book to read that he inspired. Somebody say amen. So he's never silent. It's he's never silent. He's always speaking. Now we value a lot the voice of the Spirit, right? We love when the words jump off the pages. We love when we feel something glorious, but many times we have to walk by faith. We have to live by faith. John 15, verse 15 says, no longer do I call you servants. These are the words of Jesus. He's speaking to his disciples, and that translates to every disciple in this room and every disciple that has ever put their faith in Jesus Christ and started started following him. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. So Jesus doesn't call you servants. He says, but I have called you friends. There's a difference in revelation here. A servant doesn't know what the master is doing, but a friend is acquainted with what the the friend is doing and what the master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard. Listen to this. Jesus says, for all things that I've heard from my Father. Everybody say, all things. All things. things. (laughs) That's amazing. All things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. And then he says this. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. When we were away from God, God was pursuing us. When we feel distant from God, God is pursuing us. He says, I have chosen you. He says, and I have appointed you or ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. 
This supernatural fruitfulness, fruitfulness, remember when we talked about the soul rest and resting in relationship with God, having your soul rest, and supernatural fruitfulness producing through your life. You don't have to strive, you don't have to toil, you don't have to worry about things, just be diligent. Be focused in your relationship with God, be diligent at work, be diligent in your relationships, be diligent in your prayer life, be diligent in your faith. Diligently press into resting in God. He says, this will bear much fruit in your life. You don't have to work. You don't have to worry. You don't have to toil, I should say, or strive, but that you can bear great fruit. Jesus has appointed you to bear much fruit. And that fruit is, of course, yes, it's a fruit of the Spirit in your life. How many know Jesus wants us enriched? And if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we have the fruit of the Spirit operating in our life. But it's also miracles, signs, wonders, healings, deliverances that God wants to produce through you. People getting saved, people hearing the gospel, breaking chains, taking names. Somebody say amen. amen. Right? Jesus chose us to do this. He's speaking to his early disciples. They're getting ready to produce massive fruit for the glory of God. We look at the early church in the book of Acts. We think, wow, I wish I could do that. Guess what? You can. And we will. And we are. Somebody say amen. We are. He says, I have ordained you to go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask the Father, listen to this, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And so just like Abraham, let me run through this. This is so important. Just like Abraham, you are called the friend of God. And just like Abraham, you are invited into fellowship with God. Somebody say amen. And just like Abraham, you are blessed by God in all things. But it gets even better. Like Abraham, you are personally chosen by the Father himself. You are chosen by him. And like Abraham, you have power with God to pray and receive answers, excuse me, from him. And like Abraham, you are to live by faith. It's simple. It's just believing. It's trusting. It's confidence in God. It's confidence in his promises. That's what faith is. It's so important for us to say, Lord, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, I'm going to stand in confidence. I'm going to believe you. How many know that God will fight your battle? You may be going through the most intense battle of your life, but if you will just take your stand and say, devil, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you do. I'm standing for God, and that's the bottom line. That's what faith is. Like Abraham You are to live by faith and walk by faith in order to fulfill your purpose and your mission and your assignments every day. How many know God has little assignments for us every day? He'll lead us to them, by the way. I mean, he'll show, you may not know what you're going to face today. You may not know the relationships and the people that you're going to meet. But when you end the day, you'll look back every day and you'll think, wow, that was pretty cool. That was awesome today. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to participate. And so... We see uh, six very important things, and we're on number three today. We've already covered friendship with God is agreement with God. And we saw that in Genesis 12, 1 through 5. Friendship with God, number two, is dreaming with God. And that's a very important part. You can look at that. You can also go online a couple weeks ago and and see the the message that I preach. Uh, Today we're going to cover friendship with God brings the increase of God, brings the blessing of God. And then we're going to cover in a, in a couple future uh, lessons, uh, friendship with God makes warriors for God. How many know that there's spiritual warfare, but we win? Somebody say amen. amen. Friendship with God opens greater encounters with God. Number five, and then number six, friendship with God is pressing into the impossible. Abraham had to believe sometimes. He had to believe for the impossible. It's very powerful what we're going to learn over the next couple weeks. But what do we discover about Abraham in this passage of Scripture that I'm going to share? The friend of God, Abraham. Number three, here's what it is. Here's what we're going to talk about today. Blessing and favor in life. Blessing and favor in your life. Increase exponentially. This is what the Lord has been speaking to me all week for you today. And you're here. Hallelujah. Blessing and favor in your life increase exponentially when you desire above all else to walk in friendship with God. Versus the opposite. How many know that we, that we can live in hostility toward God? 
We may not admit it, we may not say it, but our actions in our heart might reflect it. I lived in hostility toward God. Did you know that? Before I gave my life to Jesus. Now the devil wants me to think whenever I sin or whenever I fall or whenever I mess up or whenever I have a bad day that I'm in rebellion against God, and that's not true. I'm a child of God now. That will not change. Now he may, he may spank me really good. Somebody say amen. Amen. But I'm not in rebellion again. Now, if it gets into rebellion, that's a whole different story. That's a, that's a whole different path. Somebody asked me about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I, I'm not even going to get into that because, listen, you can't do it. How many, how many understand that? You cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit lives in you. Now, you can walk away from God and you can become reprobate, but that's not going to happen, right? Because Jesus lives in you. Why would you do that? I'm not going to let you do that. So that's a different story. But the blessing of God in your life increases exponentially. That means it increases at a very, very rapid rate when you walk in friendship with God. If we don't cultivate that, it can can diminish at a very rapid rate. How many understand that? And so you want to continue to walk in this stream of blessing and power and grace. And so Abraham experienced prosperity in all things. In all things, Abraham experienced prosperity in his spiritual life, in his relationships, in his physical well-being, and his based on and out of this deep relationship of intimacy and friendship with God. Listen to this passage of Scripture, Genesis 13, verses 1 through 4. Then Abram went up from Egypt and his wife and all that he had and Lot with him. Lot was his nephew to the south. And Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver and gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Listen, I am a firm believer, and I'm absolutely sold on this. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have trials in every area of your life, whether they be in relationships, whether they be in, in your health or in your finances, but I am a very, very firm believer that when we hold our ground and we stand in friendship with God, that it doesn't matter the battle, you're going to come out blessed. You are going to come out blessed. Let me say it again. You are going to come out blessed by God because you're already blessed by God. The devil's just trying to blow smoke all over the place, right? But I'm a firm believer that your friendship with God is the key to prospering in all things, in all things, in every area of your life. You say, Pastor Randy, I'm just not that smart. Maybe I should say, hey, everybody, I'm not that smart to prosper in all things. I need God's blessing. Prosperity just means increasing in the good things of God, in the joy of the Lord, in the expressions of God, in the reality of God, in the revelation of God. It just doesn't... I may understand prosperity is just not about wealth and material blessings. It includes that. But I'm going to tell you, when you're prospering on the inside, God will fight your battle and he will bring blessing into your life in every way and in all things. In wisdom and knowledge and understanding. In health and, you know, right now there's this coronavirus that's, that's just blowing up in the media. Listen, you don't have to fear a thing. Let me say that again. You do not have to fear a thing. Why? Because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. You are friends with God. And He heals all of your diseases. By His stripes you are healed. You were healed. You are healed. You will always be healed. Listen. Listen, I know, I know, I know the world wants to say, oh, no, 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 no. Well, listen, I have, I have God's word on it. We are walking in health and blessing in the things of God, in God's relationship, in our relationships, in peace and joy and love and patience. Listen, according to the scripture, <clears throat> and this is in the Bible, what I'm about to read to you may be news or you may have heard it or kind of just put it off as something that 
you know, it's, it may not be for you, but it is for you. According to the scripture, physical health and financial prosperity, when your soul rest relationship is, 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 uh, uh, is prospering and growing, then everything else begins to prosper and grow as well. Look at uh, uh, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. This is what it says. you got to hear this. This is very important. Beloved, I pray that you prosper. Everybody say prosper. In all things. Say it with me. In all things and be in health just as what? Your soul prospers. So I have to really focus on the inside. I have to keep my mind right. I have to keep my heart right. I have to keep my, my spirit man right. I got to keep my eyes right, my eye gate, my ear gate, my, my mouth gate, my heart. I got to have everything focused. And, and it isn't hard. It's just sometimes we can be distracted. The Holy Spirit is here to help me, right? The Holy Spirit is here to empower that and keep my heart focused. But he says, just as your soul prospers. So if my mind, my will, and my emotions are in line with my spirit man, then my heart and my life are prospering. Again, the devil will try to interfere, but how many understand? We, are, we will outlast the devil. How many understand that, that when we take our stand, that means for good? Jesus was tempted by the devil in the wilderness, and he resisted the devil three times, and what happened? Finally, the devil left him, and angels came and ministered to him. The same principle applies. Hold your ground during your battle. But listen, he says, I pray that you would prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. This is an important truth to grasp, and I'm gonna, you got to hear this. Did you know you are blessed even more abundantly than Abraham, the friend of God? You are called the friend of God, but you're blessed even in a greater way because Christ lives in you. Abraham walked with God. God was with him. But guess what? God is not only with us, Christ lives in us. Hallelujah. Oh, give him praise right now. No matter where I go, God is there. He is with me. And as a friend of God, you have eternal life, Abraham. Abraham didn't have eternal life. Jesus literally spoke a parable about Abraham being in paradise. That was not heaven. Those things were not opened up yet. That's a whole different theological discussion. It wasn't hell. It was paradise. It was a place prepared. And so that when Jesus gave his life, died, and went into the lower parts, he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave out of the hands of the devil and ascended on high and led captivity captive. And all of those in paradise went on to be with Jesus because the way wasn't made yet. How many under, I know that was deep theology, and I just, woo, I went there. It only took me 15 seconds, but I went there. On Sunday morning, by the way. Come on. I mean, we, we are so blessed. We are blessed above Abraham. I mean, when you get out in the morning, I'm telling you, the devil trembles unless you give him some room. Don't give him any room. Just plop your foot down on his throat and say, devil, you're getting out of my way today. Amen. As a friend of God, you have eternal life. Christ is in you. Plus, you have the blessing of Abraham, who was blessed in everything that he did. Listen to Galatians chapter 3, verse 8 says this, in the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Everybody say, that's me. I am a Gentile. Preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand. Abraham was not Jewish. He was a Gentile. There was no, there was no Jewish nation at the time. And so that's, isn't that incredible that God would do things like that? Saying in all, listen to this, in all, in you, all the nations shall be blessed. This is what he said to Abraham. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. So you've got to hear what I'm about to tell you. Did you know that friendship with God translates into every single nation of the earth? What do I mean by that? Friendship with God translates into every nation of the earth. 
that wherever this gospel is preached, it doesn't matter if it's a poor nation, it doesn't matter if it's, it's a wealthy nation as we know wealthy nations, it doesn't matter if it's a poor family, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's a rich family, it doesn't matter, I mean, in, in wealth and in riches, it doesn't matter what the, what the state of poverty is for anybody when this gospel is preached and people are forgiven of their sins. It unlocks the blessing of heaven upon their life so that they can walk in the full blessing of God. And that's important. That's important why? Because God loves to bless his friends. And the Lord loves to bring people out of sin, out of poverty, out of all the oppression of the enemy, out of sickness, out of disease, out of every possible oppressive thing. And he broke the power of death, hallelujah, by rising from the dead. Come on, somebody. And so that's why Christ wants us to preach the gospel to every nation. That's why they're going to Germany. That's why we have a mission trip to Puerto Rico. That's why we send missionaries all over the world because this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Father wants fullness of blessing in every nation. Why? Because he loves all people. I know the world wants to divide us and conquer us, but God wants to unite us and bless us. See, when Christ comes in and when the gospel is preached to every ethnos, in, in the Greek, nation is called ethnos, every ethnicity. When this gospel is preached, God loves every ethnicity. When it's preached, when sin is forgiven and the curse is broken, the sky's the limit for all that God wants to bring upon that person or that family or that nation or that church. The Father wants his full measure of blessing to be poured out on the poorest person. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen to this. I got to read this to you. This is, this is Isaiah 61. Can I read this? It's not on your notes. I just pulled this out this morning. I thought, wow, this is really good. This makes my point. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus is quoted as saying this. He's quoting the Scripture. But this is Isaiah. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings, the gospel to the what? To the poor. Why? Why is it good news to the poor? Because it breaks the chains of poverty off of people. It opens up opportunity. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. Vengeance on the devil, right? To, the, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty, listen, for ashes, and the joy, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Somebody shout, hallelujah, that they may be called, listen to this, this, this is the poor, this is the broken, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, and they shall rebuild, listen, the old ruins. Listen, we build old waste places. Did you know that this place was a warehouse, and it, it, it was full of oil and all kinds of junky stuff? And how many know that we rebuilt stuff like that? but we also rebuild broken lives and hurt people. I love it. They shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities. Somebody say amen. amen. The desolate. This is all the gospel. This is the gospel. This is why I love the gospel. The desolations of many generations shall be raised up. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Listen to this. And I looked up the Greek word or the Hebrew word, and they shall be called. It says servants of God, but it literally means the worshipers of God, the friends of God, and those that minister with God face to face. Hallelujah. This is the gospel. 
This is powerful. It goes on. It's wonderful. See, nations need the gospel, just like people need the gospel. This is why we preach the gospel. For 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says this. For you know, you got to hear this. This is powerful. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you that you through his poverty might become rich. What does that mean? Well, just like this. Listen, just like Jesus came and he became, the Bible says, he became sin for us that we might be now made the righteousness of God in Christ. Did you know that translates into every area of your life? Every area. Now, if the devil's robbing you, you command the devil to cease from robbing you. And if you're robbing God, you command yourself, I'm going to start tithing. Ooh, it got quiet in here. I went there. I'm okay. I'm confident in my own skin because I know the blessing of it. I'm going to tell you the truth. But listen, if you're prayerless, I'm going to pray. If I'm not reading the word, I'm going to read the word. If I'm not sharing the good news, I'm going to share the good news as the Lord opens the doors, right? It it applies in every area of our life. Friendship. This is friendship. Jesus became sin for us. Jesus became poor for us. That's why people give up everything and go and share the gospel with people. They do that because that's the model of Jesus. When Kim and I, when we launched this church, we gave up everything. We gave up our salary at the church, so we had nothing. I didn't have a job. I had to believe God. I literally had to believe God. I had no funding from the district like they give now. I had nothing. But how many understand that when God calls you and you're the friend of God, God is going to bless you in every area of your life? Now, it it wasn't without battle, but it was still a blessing. This is friendship. Jesus redeemed us to save us, to restore us, to befriend us. So let me ask you a question. Can I say with great confidence that as a friend of God, God wants you to be blessed and highly favored by him? Can I say that? And will you believe that? I want you to believe that. Anything else is a lie. Anything else is a distortion of God's love for us. He wants you blessed in everything. Why? Why does he want you blessed? Because he calls you his friends. And how many know he trusts his friends? He can trust you with his word. He can trust you with his revelation. He can trust you to tell others. He can trust you to love others. He can can bless you financially, and you will bless others. Somebody say amen. He trusts you. He trusts his friends. It's hard for him. I believe nothing's too hard for him, but I believe that it withholds the blessing of God when we don't operate in this beautiful friendship and cultivating friendship with him. Jesus knows who his friends are. Did you know that? How do I know that? Is that in the word? Well, yeah. Listen to what it says in 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. Nevertheless... The foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. Here's the foundation of God that has a seal on it. The Lord knows those who are his. Jesus said, you know, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, you know, knows who I am. Not everybody that stands in a pulpit knows who I am. They may, they may have this air about them, but how many know Jesus looks at the heart? He looks at the heart. And then he says this, let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's the foundation of friendship with God because iniquity is hostility toward God. If I have sin in my life and I'm continuing to go in that route and not confessing it and not allowing Jesus to soften my heart, then I will, I will walk in hostility. Friendship with God brings the increase and in the blessing of God. For that, I am confident. I am confident in that. Kim and I, we had to walk through this. There were two years when we started learning to tithe and give. It was unbelievable how rough financially it was, but we were determined. How many understand that? 
we were determined. So let me make it abundant, abundantly clear and we'll close. The devil wants people begging. God wants people blessed. The devil wants to diminish you. God wants to increase you. The devil wants you poor, but God wants you to prosper. The devil wants you sick, but God wants you well and healthy. The devil wants you angry, but the Lord wants you humble. The devil wants you depressed, but God loves when you're full of joy. The devil wants you to stay offended and walking in unforgiveness, but God wants you to forgive and to be forgiven. Somebody say amen. God is for you, and the devil is against you. And if God is for you, who can stand against you? Oh, come on, give him praise. Who can do it? Hallelujah. Friendship with God is the key to all fullness, blessing, the gifts of the Spirit, and the blessings of God in this life. And it's for you. It's for you. I said, it's for you. I'm going to ask our worship team to come.